Number 69. A city is located at 40 degrees north latitude. Assume the radius of the Earth is 3,960 miles, and the Earth rotates once every 24 hours. Find the linear speed of a person who resides in this city. Uh, so to give us a little context, draw a little circle. All right. Now they tell us the radius of the Earth is going to be uh, 3,960 uh, miles. All right. Now, for right now, they also tell us that pretend you're a person that lives at 40 degrees north latitude. What in the world does that mean? Well, if that means that if this line basically here represents the equator, you know, this linear line here, uh, that a 40 degree north latitude would create a 40 degree angle relative to the equator. In other words, you are at this particular point right there on the Earth. Okay? Uh, now, the question is, if you're here on Earth, remember Earth is a sphere, so let's draw like a little, let's try to give this a little dimension, let's see if I can do it one second. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, so pretend now you are, and let's give it even a little more dimension, right? This will be in the back, so I'll dash that a little bit. So pretend now you're at 40 degrees north latitude and you and the Earth is rotating. That means you're going to move like this, right? As the Earth rotates around, right? You're going around this circumference. Did you hear that? Circumference, okay? You're going around that circumference. Are you traveling as much distance as you would be if you were on, let's say, the equator and you had to travel around, you know, that particular distance now? No, right? No, they're both different, okay? And therefore, since they're both different, they should have different speeds. You travel slower. You should. That should kind of make sense, right? I mean, you're both going around the Earth once, one rotation, but you're covering less distance. So the question is now, what's the linear distance? Okay? Or excuse me, linear speed. Sorry, linear speed. And so speed, remember, is just simply some distance over time. Some distance over time. Linear speed, that is. Okay? So speed here is going to be the distance that this dot moved when I drew it around that circle. Okay? That's known as the circumference. All right, circumference divided then by the time it took to cover that circumference. How long did it take the person to go around the Earth? One time. 24 hours, right? Okay, so we know the time basically. So speed is going to be equal to circumference is now 2 pi r, or pi d, but we'll do 2 pi r, right, over then the 24 hours. So it looks like all I really need to know is just what the heck is R. Now, you might say, oh, oh, I know what R is, right? 3,960, oh, great, got it, plug it in. <clears throat> it's going to be wrong. Why? Because this is the radius of the Earth at this location, at the equator. That's the radius of the Earth, okay? You want to know this radius. Ah, interesting, right? You want to know this radius, because if you can calculate this radius... When this thing goes around the circle, right, like this, when it goes around the circle, you would have calculated that circumference now, and that's the circumference you wanted to calculate. Did I say that twice? I might have. Anyway, it's getting late. So, how do we find the radius? Well, the first thing is I noticed something. I noticed that basically this line, right, is the same thing as this length here. It's definitely not the entire length of that black line, right? It doesn't extend all the way out. But I noticed that it's ba it's a little shorter, right? So if I just bring this straight down, I think to myself, hmm, okay. Maybe I can make a little triangle out of this, right? Maybe I can, maybe if I bring this down from that point, oh, that's a triangle way to, okay, I'm trying to make a right triangle, right? And I'm also trying to make this neat, as neat as possible. Just bear with me. They should connect, okay? And this is going to make a nice right angle. Now, if I want to find this side, okay, that's what I'm after. I know the angle in here of this right triangle, but I don't. it seems like I don't know anything else. But you do. You know the radius. They might say, oh, great. Well, how's that going to help me? I know this. 
It's too complicated. Well, guess what? This is the radius of the Earth, but what's this also? <laughs> That's also the radius, right? What's this? That's also the radius. What's this? That's also the radius. What's that? That's also the radius. So what that means is that this side of your right triangle now that you just created, the 3,960 miles, is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, angle, you want to find the side adjacent to that angle. That's cosine, my friend. So cosine of that angle in there is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of the angle, they told us it's 40 degrees, is equal to that adjacent side divided by then the length of the hypotenuse, which is 3,960. All you have to do now is just do a cross multiplication here, okay? And the adjacent side's length will be, plug it into the calculator, by the way, make sure you're not in, rate. if you're going to plug in 40 degrees, you see up here my calculator is in radian mode, you got to change that. Go to mode, okay? You got to make sure you are in degree mode, which is right here. So click down, click over to degree, and hit your enter. You just change it to degree mode, okay? Great. Now you can clear out of it. And now do your calculation. Cosine of 40. Oh, 440, sorry. Cosine of 40. Then multiply that now by your 3,960. And we get a value here of 3,033.5. Okay? Now that length of the adjacent side was also the same as the radius of this circular track that that particular person is going to travel around. Yes? So in other words, this is the radius now that's important that you got to use, okay? So finally, speed is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the radius of 3,033.5, no, sorry, all divided then by the 24 hours. Now remember this unit is in miles, right? So there's really miles. So when you do this, it's going to come out to be miles per hour, all right? And that's a fine speed. You can do it in miles per hour, meters per second, Kilometers per decade, who cares? But now what you're going to do is plug in the values, okay? So take 2, you're going to do 2 times pi. Then multiply by, use the exact value. Don't use, don't use this right here, okay? Use the exact value. So go back to your calculator. You want this answer, right? So you can simply scroll up if you want and hit enter. That will enter it for you, okay? And then divide it by now the 24. And there you have it, okay? 794.2. I'll round it there. That's good. Miles per hour. There you have it, my friend. That's how fast you're going. That's how fast you're going if you live at 40 degrees north latitude. I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? Depending upon where you live, you know, you're traveling about 800 miles an hour. You don't feel that you're moving. That's the beauty of it. It's the beauty of relative motion. Guys, and your frame of reference. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please help us out by subscribing, liking, and maybe even telling some of your classmates. All right? We really appreciate it. We are so just really appreciative of all the support we've been given. And uh, we're going to press on for you. All right? Take care.